Looking for cheap and reliable College 25 Ultimate Team coins? Head on over to MMO EXP and use code Poodle at checkout for 5% off your order. What's going on everybody? It's Poodle back with another CFB 25 Dynasty video and today I'm going to show you guys how player progression works and answering all the questions that I've seen online about player progression. Before we get into the video, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, comment down below if you have any in-depth questions or hit me up over on Twitter. If you don't follow me, follow me over there. Also my TikTok link will be down below. And if you're new and you haven't seen Underdog, make sure to check it out. My link will be down below in the description. If you use my code Poodle, you get up to 250 in your first deposit and access to all daily specials. So in College Football 25 Dynasty, player progression is not as cut and dry as it is in Madden. Madden's very simple. Get a lot of stats. You see the XP you get per week. You take the XP, you upgrade the skill points where you want them. You get a certain stack cap so that you can get your dev chart upgraded. It's very different. So Let's get into this. First, you want to do is go over to your roster and view roster. This is going to be a baseline for how player progression really works. So I'd recommend clicking on a guy that's a little bit younger so you can kind of get an idea for what you're looking at. So let's start with Jelani Watkins, my freshman wide receiver. So if you look over here, he's a 72 overall. The first thing you want to do when looking at player progression is check the bottom left corner and see what the development trait is. He has star. So there are four development traits. I'm going to make a video going over all development traits explained and the best strategies around utilizing them. But for the purpose of this video, there's normal, there's impact, there's star, and there's elite. If you want to look at it, if, you, if you're a Madden guy, normal is like bronze, normal dev, right? Star, impact's like star dev, star dev's like superstar, and elite's like X factor. So keep that in mind. It's kind of that same breakdown. And this will really play a big role in how players and player players do develop in this game, as well as stats. Now, one thing is right above his right below his name, if you look in the top left corner below the 72 overall, there's a bar there. That bar does fill up with a yellow bar, and that's how you get skill points. If you look in the top right corner, you see he has zero S, that is skill points. So you do need skill points to upgrade your players. If you go over to ratings, each package will have a skill point package, right? So route running needs three current leads upgraded. And if you look all the way on these bars, all the grayed out ones or the black grayed out ones, I should say, like the four here are the ones you can upgrade. That one that's crossed out means that that's his cap. He cannot max out his route running as a, he's a deep route runner. He's more of a speed fast guy. His route running will cap there. Look on down his power will cap. He's a deep running, deep route running guy, right? So here's the thing. If you look at this, you'll get an idea for how your player can kind of build. His IQ will never be maxed, power never be maxed. Now, one thing we did note is that a lot of people have noticed you cannot actually manually choose what you want to upgrade. This game is, I guess, built to be more sim, more realistic. Your player will upgrade in the way that they're meant to be upgraded, more variants. I kind of like this only because in past Maddens, everyone's focusing on like speed, throw power, everyone builds the same kind of guys. This will kind of make sure players stay true to how they're built, right? He's not going to be a strong guy. He's going to be a fast guy. He's going to have pretty good hands, right? So I like this. So skill points in the corner, as you accrue them, you accrue them through game day goals by upgrading your guy, playing well, uh, winning, winning awards, just playing the game. You accrue skill points. And as you accrue them, it will be automatically upgraded. Maybe they change it. Maybe this is an issue. Maybe eventually they do add the ability to manually upgrade. But as of now, this is how it is. So just note, do not stress wondering how to do it. So now the next thing is here how to continue, how to player progress, right? So when you look at their dev trait, this is how they progress. So let's say you have a 72 overall freshman with normal dev, right? With nothing. They won't upgrade much in their college career. Look at your dev trait kind of as what they have, the, what their future is. A normal dev guy probably finishes their career in the low 80s. They're, an impact, they're, they're a good player. They're a rotational piece. They're a guy that could see the field. A star dev guy is the kind of guy that if you have a great season with, or if you properly develop them, they could easily hit the 90s and they're gonna be a star player. A elite guy is going to be like the X Factor guy. Those are those top tier, top tier players that in like a season or two will be high 90s. Like they're they're gonna be the guys in college football, the Travis Hunters, the Shador Sanders, the Carson Becks. Those are gonna be those type guys. Now the last one that I left for last impact. Impact are the variant guys. Those are guys that you can if you do them right, you could build them up to be impactful players, but if not, they kind of can fall behind. So make sure you are properly putting them on path to develop. So let me show you what I mean by that. So let's say Jelani Watkins being a star dev, right? If you look at my wide receiver core, he's a star dev. He technically could see the field, but he is because he's 98 speed, but he is low. So what I made another video going over this. So you want to check that out about red shirting, and how to develop in that way. But you do want to make a decision pretty early on. He's a little bit on the lower side of overall. So you could red shirt him and give him another year. But here's what's important. Freshman year is the biggest jump from what I've seen. Freshman year to sophomore year, 
is your big jump, right? That's like your homecoming. After that, it's more like sophomore is a little bit lower. And then by junior, senior year, you're really just giving yourself like Harold Perkins may get a point or two, right? For a great season. So just understand that freshman year is your biggest jump. And then there's technically redshirt freshman still a big jump, but I think freshman is bigger. You want to make your decision week one, who's going to be starting, who's going to be redshirted. I think that's so important because you're going to hurt a player if you don't properly align them. If I plan on starting Jelani Watkins, I'm moving him into my wide receiver one or two slot and I'm having a great season with him. I've had a great season with him already. He goes up to like a 90 overall year one. That's the impact. That's what star dev can do. If you have a Heisman type or offensive player of the year type season, you could easily get a star guy up there. Now, if you redshirt him and you just sim through, he's going to get into like the low 80s by default. So keep that in mind. If you redshirt a guy that you think has potential, but he's not ready to start, you can get a pretty big bump as long as their impact are higher. Now, if they're star or higher, same concept, except if you play with these guys, the, 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 it will exponentially grow, right? Like they'll get more out of playing them. So you definitely want to keep that in mind. Now, another strategy here for player progression, when you recruit three stars or two stars that have like impact or star, even elite dev, those are the kind of guys that will be in the low 60 overalls, but you could easily just redshirt them for a year and build them up. So that's where player progression comes into mind. You definitely want to be looking at the dev traits because if you don't look at the dev traits, you're not going to assess things properly. Redshirting a normal dev guy is not going to get you anywhere, especially when they're lower overalls, but that's where the recruiting aspect of player progression comes into play. So with all that being said, make your redshirt decisions, play with them, get their stats, build them up, get, get them in position for the one big time of the year where player progression occurs. So if you guys don't already know, I'm going to sim to it now. The end of the season is when the training occurs. That's when the big upgrade comes. That's when it considers all factors, your skill points. That's when it considers how well you played. That's when it considers your dev traits. That's when all things come together. And that's the big time of the year where you're going to be upgraded, which comes shortly after the off season. One other thing that you do want to keep in mind when we're talking about player progression is there are packages. So make sure to look through your coach package and see what you can kind of unlock and what you could buy. But if you look at the passing game one in motivator, and for instance, they're all for all the positions, bonus XP when quarterbacks are drafted. So if you do have a freshman quarterback with like star, a leader impact, when you get your, let's say I get Nussmeyer, right? My quarterback drafted. Let's say I do. Your quarterbacks will get a bonus XP if it's in the top three. You also, if you go down there, get an off season training boost. So put in the work is an important one. If you're trying to build a certain position group, like a quarterback quickly, you may want to get that. So every year they get a bigger boost. So again, like I said, like I said, all things considered equal, you're going to see what progression looks like for players. But if you add these packages in, you can do that. Of course, this will require some training points, but off season training boost is a big deal. I highly recommend you try to get put in the work for at least some of the ones you really care about and you need quick development like quarterback. And of course, there's other things to increase XP, but definitely look at your coaching packages. The mind reader one is going to be in strategist. If you look at the bottom mind reader DL, uh, LB, depending on which position you're looking at, increased chance to learn dev trait. This is helpful. Now it is expensive to get all the way down here. It's only a chance. It's only after visits. I don't think it's the most efficient use of points, but if you do want to know, it would be a great way to, let's say you're recruiting four different quarterbacks and you find out that one is normal, one is impact and one is star elite. You kind of want that star elite. It's a great way to bring in guys that you know will get huge training boosts. You know will grow. Not getting a five star that's normal dev and it's like, eh. This guy's not going to be much, right? So I simulated through two seasons so that I could show you guys kind of how it would look over the course of two seasons with nothing touched. This is just players being impacted by their dev traits and what, what does for the progression. So I simulated through two seasons, so you guys can just get a look at how a team would kind of grow with nothing touched. This isn't Heisman, Offensive Player this year. This isn't including awards, stats, nothing. This is just players and their dev traits, nothing touched. So that's why it's important to do the do the red shirt. It's important to start certain players, check out their traits. But this is all things considered equal, right? Just this is what it is. Tyler Singleton had a huge jump. He's a star dev outside linebacker. He went up to 90 after two seasons. He's now a junior. So that's something to consider is that some of these guys with star dev will naturally just get into the 90s after two years. Caden, uh, Caden Durham, one of my running backs, this guy can actually get up to an 88, 89 in season one if you use him. So unused, still gets close to a 90 and same concept, star dev. So this is, pretty, this is a pretty good represent, representation of that a star dev player within that overall range could probably get to a 90 through two seasons doing the bare minimum. War, uh, Warmax, same situation. He didn't go up as quite as much, but he's only an impact. So keep that in mind. Over two seasons, he started off, off closer to an 80, but he only got up to a 88, right? 89 range. So keep that in mind as well. But as you can see, that's kind of how it works. Just take a look at those dev traits and look at where they are. If they're a freshman, they're going to get that. If they're a freshman with impact star elite, they're going to get the biggest jump. If they're a senior or a junior in like the high 70s, low 80s with that, it's kind of dead at this point. So just definitely keep that in mind. 
but overall that's pretty much how player progression works if you have any questions comment down below and let me know it's pretty cut and dry now that we've ran some sims and we've kind of seen how seen how it works for the most part skill points auto populate as it stands it is what it is nothing we could do about that at this moment but make sure to check out my other videos my red shirt and how to upgrade players the fastest i'll kind of give you an idea for the best strategies of putting your players in positions to succeed but this is just going over how player progression does work in the game and kind of how you have to just go about building your roster if you enjoyed the video give this video a big thumbs up sub if you're new comment down below any questions and of course check out underdog if you haven't thank you so much for watching i'm out peace Thank you.